Good morning, I'm Bruce Voss, Vice Chairman of NASDAQ, and we're here at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center with Jay Kaplan, the co-founder and CEO of uh, SEDAC. Very great to have you here, Jay. Thanks so much, Bruce, great to be here. So Jay, congratulations, it's been, uh, I know, a big honor. You guys received the honor of being named a CNBC Disruptor 50. What does being a disruptor mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I think um, a disruptor is someone who can take risks, right? Um, can go against the status quo in a specific industry. In our case, it's cybersecurity. Um, it's an industry that's still pretty nascent, but there's a lot of really big players, really big incumbents. Um, and uh, coming in and coming up with an innovative solution, coming up with um, a way to just break that status quo, uh, go against the grain, um, I think is what a disruptor is all about. And you know, I think we, we've definitely done that in the marketplace. Our customers have recognized that we're onto something really big, really exciting. Um, and uh, we're excited to continue on the, the great progress and traction that we've had since early on. Well, recognized two years in a row, so that's, that's very impressive, especially in this big space of cybersecurity. So congratulations Thank again. you very much. So uh, we're at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, and we love having great entrepreneurs here. So what does entrepreneurship mean to you? Yeah, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, kind of going back to the whole disruptor theme, yeah. it's about it's someone who can take a risk, right? Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, huge corporations out there, and it's really difficult to, to take an idea um, and actually execute on the idea, especially when there's players out there that have incredible talent, incredible resources, um, and being able to just uh, rally a team, um, build um, a team of executives and engineers and operators that, that can that take that idea and, and, and bring it to fruition, um, it's, it's challenging. Um, but uh, yeah, I, mean, I think an entrepreneur is someone who doesn't, doesn't mind the risk and doesn't mind all of the hurdles that you have to overcome, um, and his ability to, and has an ability to take that idea and just make it a reality. That's, we hear that a lot here at the center, that it is all about taking that risk and taking that first step, so that's great. Um, so tell us about Sinek, your co-founder uh, and CEO of the company. How and why did you start this company? Um, so if I back up a little bit, I, you know, my career kind of started at the National Security Agency. I spent uh, about four years there focused on their offensive cyber mission. Um, and one of the really exciting things about the agency is that it gives you a very unique perspective on the cybersecurity landscape, one that I think is very different from people on the outside. Um, you kind of see the world in a different lens, and you, you, you have a, an appreciation for um, what they're doing there, but you also, um, you get, it's a little bit scary to see just how bad the problem is. Um, you know, if you rally together the right resources, expertise, motivation, um, skills, money, you can really be successful at, in our case, was, you know, breaking into foreign networks and um, other computers, uh, and in my case, for counterterrorism purposes. Um, and and we, we took that and, and recognized that there are a lot of gaps on the market um, as it relates to um, how companies perceive themselves from an adversarial perspective. Um, and we kind of said, okay, there has to be a better way um, that companies can be looking at themselves. And that, that's really where the idea stemmed from. And um, you know, having, taking this notion of crowdsourcing security, taking really bright minds all over the world, coupling them with technology, and helping enterprises just understand what their attack surface is and where their holes are, um, that, that's what we've done. And it's, uh, it's an exciting business, uh, but we still have a lot to do and a lot to work on before I think our initial vision becomes a reality. Well, they say about cybersecurity, it's probably never done. The work's never done because there's right. always something else that's going to come up there, and we, we feel that you know, as NASDAQ as well. So uh, it's great with your background in National Security Agency. I think that's a, that's a pretty amazing background for, for starting a, a cyber company. So um, one of the things I've heard uh, about is ethical hacking. How do you define and utilize ethical ha ha hacking at Sinek? Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's, there's I think, a uh, perception that all hackers are automatically bad, right? Right, right. And it's not actually the case. Right. Um, there certainly are people doing things for malicious reasons, right? There are state actors, there are um, crime syndicates, there are people who are trying to make money doing, you know, hacking. Um, but uh, the reality is there's actually a very large, healthy um, ecosystem of individuals who are doing this for good purposes. Um, they want to help companies, they want to make them more secure, and they really enjoy doing it. They enjoy breaking things. Um, you know, they can be former engineers, they can be former network people, um, the variety of skill sets and backgrounds, they, they kind of, um, they, they, 
they decide, hey, like I really like this hacker mentality, um, and they decide to get into this field. So this whole notion and concept of ethical hacker, it's actually people who are highly professional, highly competent, um, and can do this stuff to just help uh, companies become more secure, and that's what we take advantage of here right. at SINAC. Of course, vetting them and making sure that we put them through a lot of process to, to, to ensure we have the ethical folks and not the, you know, quote unquote, black hat hackers out there. Right, you'd rather have the ethical hackers doing it than someone else that could get in, right? That's absolutely right. That's right. Makes a lot of sense. So um, we often do talk about the founder's journey here at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, and we know it's never a straight path. So what, what did you do and how did you know um, that this is what you wanted to start, and this is where you want to focus your career on. Yeah, you know, I've been in love with cybersecurity since a very, very early age. Um, you know, I started a, a, a shared web hosting company back when I was 15 years old, and um, you know, those are the days before Amazon AWS and all the cloud providers, and that's how people really got their website on the internet. Um, and I, I look back at those days, and one of the most fascinating things for me was really securing our clients' websites, securing those servers, making sure that people couldn't compromise it, proper permissions, making sure the servers were locked down. And I kind of took that and um, continued on that path all through my career. You know, studied um, cybersecurity and information assurance funded by the government, funded by the NSA uh, through college, then kind of owed them some time at the NSA, an incredible experience, a really great way to build a foundation in this industry and get some uh, credibility. Um, and then four years in, you know, came up with this idea um, and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try to make this, this thing happen. And, you know, there's a huge need. Um, and I, I took my co-founder with me out of the NSA. We, we, worked, we worked together there, and he's now our CTO. Um, and we decided to, to, to make it happen. And, uh, you know, we're three years in today, uh, just about 100 employees, um, an incredible enterprise customer base across the Fortune 500 and Global 2000. Um, and we're really excited to continue building on that success. And, and getting, getting re great recognition for your results, so that's, that's pretty amazing. So um, if someone has an idea but doesn't really know where to begin, what, what advice would you give them to uh, with the first two things that you think they should do? The first two things. So number one, I think they have to be sure that they're ready to go all in, right? You can't, you can't come up with an idea and say, I'm you know, going to dip my toes in the water and see if we can try to make it happen. You have to be ready to leave whatever you're doing, maybe take no salary, um, and just, just go. Um, you know, I think that's a common mistake that, that entrepreneurs make. They think they can kind of do two jobs at once, do it on the side. Um, I think you have to go all in or you're not going to make it happen. Um, and secondly, and perhaps more importantly, I think you really have to gain some validation in the marketplace that you're entering. Um, so uh, in our case, it was you know, going to some customers um, and saying, uh, prospective customers, of course, and saying, hey, you know, we're thinking of this crazy idea. You know, crowdsourcing security doesn't really belong in the same sentence, right? Um, but would this be interesting to you? And um, you know, before we left NSA, we, we kind of did a little bit of this diligence. We talked to some investors as well. Um, and what we realized was there was a huge need. And this was really exciting to these customers. And um, we felt that there was a big enough need and, and enough excitement for us to just make the hurdle and, and, and jump right in. So that's exactly what we did. So jump right in. That's, that's, that's good advice. So let's scare our audience just a little bit here. So cybersecurity is a big kind of scary world. What are you excited about in cybersecurity, and what terrifies you the most? Ooh. Um, you know, I'm excited about all the innovation. I think there's so many incredible companies. You, you know, you look in the Bay Area alone, um, it, it's hard to keep track of all the companies. You walk through the, the, the f um, expo floors of right. the RSA conference right. or, you know, the Black Hat conference in Las Vegas, um, and it's really amazing to see uh, just, just what these companies are doing. Um, but the scary thing to me is that uh, cybersecurity is still a pretty early industry. And um, we are still behind, I think, a lot of the, 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 the bad actors or the threats that are out there. If you kind of take a look at um, you know, our critical infrastructure, for example, you know, um, water utilities, uh, electric grid, and so forth, um, these are things that were built a long, long time ago, right. and people did right. not care about cybersecurity then. And so we're retroactively trying to fix that. Um, but uh, I have a belief that a lot of these um, critical infrastructure um, utilities are actually compromised. Talked about this at RSA at the conference uh, earlier this year. And um, unless we're able to get the right talent pool to come in and 
and remediate, um, we're going to be in a pretty bad place. I mean, you kind of just look at the supply and demand problem. It's a, it's a problem that we're attacking, right? Over uh, 210,000 secu open security jobs, cybersecurity jobs in the US alone. Um, and believe it or not, there's only 65,000 certified cybersecurity professionals in the US, period. Um, uh, it, the, the, it just doesn't match up. And so, you know, we have a long way to go before we have the right expertise to actually attack the problem. Right. No, it's a huge, huge area and an area of concern for every, comp every public company that, out there. So it's great that innovators like you are coming up with new ways to solve this, those problems. So as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur, what's the worst advice you've ever, ever been given? Ooh, the worst advice. Hmm. You know, someone once said to me, uh, your investors are just money. And they don't really matter. And luckily, I didn't take that advice. But I think it was pretty bad advice, uh, thinking in, in uh, retrospect. Um, you know, we look at our investor pool and they're all incredible individuals with, with enormous experience. Um, they've made a tremendous, um, they've helped us uh, with, you know, traction on the customer front, making so many introductions. They've helped us really refine our product. Um, and, and these guys are veterans, right? They've been at it. They know what works, what doesn't work. Right. And so we've been able to lean on them for a lot of different things. Um, you know, I think if we just went after quote unquote dumb money, which, right. uh, you know, some people right. refer to in the venture capitalist community. Um, we'd be in a very different place today. So glad we didn't take that advice, but maybe not the best advice that I received early on. So like you found some good investors too. They're good partners. So that, that's what you want for the right investors. So Absolutely. That's great. So um, Jay, uh, you are a DC transplant. Uh, you're near the Bay Area. Um, what's your favorite monument in DC? Favorite monument. Um, you know what? I loved going to the Lincoln Memorial overlooking the reflection pool. I think it was, it was just a spectacular sight. You know, you walk up those stairs and you see this amazing just Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair. Um, it was one of my favorite places to go back in college when I was in D.C. Um, and, uh, yeah, have, have, haven't had the privilege to go back in quite some time. Maybe, maybe I'm, next time I'm in D.C., I'll have to check it out again. It's so. one of my favorites, too. It's an impressive monument. But, um, it really is. So, Jay, appreciate you joining us uh, for Facebook Live here at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. Congratulations on all your success. Um, we got Jay Kaplan, co-founder and CEO of Snack. Um, Look forward to doing more events with you at the Entrepreneurial Center. Thanks for joining Great. us. Great. Thanks so much, Bruce. I appreciate it. Great to be here.